Welcome E4 Family Church and happy third anniversary. Stand on your feet wherever you are and give God praise. We are rejoicing because we have seen all that the Lord has done and we are so thankful for him. He is good. He is faithful family. And we're so thankful for you because we have been on this journey together for three years and we look forward to being in this journey with you for years and years to come. To God be the glory. We're continuing with our series real life priorities and we're talking all about family in Ephesians chapter 3. We invite you to study this book right along with us going line by line as we learn more understanding about Ephesians and what the Father's plan is for us. E4 Kids, your worship service starts right now at e4familychurch.com. And we have a parent guide that has everything that will help you be successful with today's message. I invite you to worship the Lord through your giving at e4familychurch.com. Thank you to all of those who have given and continue to give. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Our Bible studies are still going strong. We're studying the Bible and we're looking and we're taking a walkthrough through the book of Ephesians. Join one of our groups that works best for you. It is time to worship and pray. Let's lift up some praise and worship to our God. Lord, we are so excited to be here. Lord, we're so thankful for all that you have done. God, we're so thankful for the work that is yet to be done. God, we ask that you would walk this out with us, Lord God, that you would help us, that you would give us insight, Lord God, that you would give us greater boldness to do what you've called us to do. God, that we would walk and not be fearful. We would walk and do all the things that you have called us to do. God, I pray that you would fill every room, that every person would sense your presence as they stand up and give you worship. They stand up and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. Searching for truth. Been on my own way, but I know that I need you. And the love that you have shown to me, and the heart you want me to receive, was to your grace and mercy I cannot receive. The way you love me so well, does it make much sense? It's not for me, and I don't know why you did. Or maybe I do, it's because you want a big family. All of eternity, and I don't know why you chose me. So that you just cannot believe. Now I'm struggling, understanding who we really are. Sensing your words are close, but at times you feel so far. And the love that makes the size of the smaller sea can move big mountains into the sea. And you need to trust in you, but at times it's hard to see. The way you love me, so well, does it make much sense? It's not for me, I don't know why you're in. Or maybe you do it because you want a big family that's filled with for all of eternity. And I don't know why you chose me, something you just cannot believe. I 
want to be family, still with the brother of eternity. Don't know why you chose me. My name is Michael Evans, and I'm the pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Also, God has blessed me with the opportunity to serve as the mayor here in the city of Mansfield, Texas. I want to just let each and every one of you know who are members of the E4 Family Church that we celebrate with you on your church's anniversary. Pastor Jason Gabriel, man, listen, continue to allow God to use you in a mighty way. And know that the Bethlehem Church, as well as the Mansfield Churches for the City, all of us, we're wrapping our arms around you and around your great church, praying that God will bless you with many years of service and that he will continue to enlarge your territory so that you can save more souls. So again, we just say to you, happy anniversary. God bless you to the E4 Church family from the people, the folks the Mansfield, Texas community. God bless you, and may God just continue to shine his light of love on each and every one of you. Y'all take care. E4 Church, happy birthday. Praise God. Hey, let me tell you, praise God for all of the kingdom impact you've had. I want you to know your brothers and sisters at Authentic are hallelujah shouting with you to celebrate your birthday. We're so excited for you. We love you. And three incredible years, and I believe this, many more to come. So hug your pastors, hug your brothers and sisters, and know this. We are cheering you on. Happy birthday. We love you. Congratulations and happy anniversary to the E4 family, Pastor Jason, the Gabriel family. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And today, that's what we celebrate. We're celebrating three years of God's faithfulness and three years of your faithfulness. And we look forward to seeing all that God is going to do through you guys in this next season. And so on behalf of Arise Church, we honor you. We celebrate you today. Have some fun. You deserve it. God bless you. We love you. Good morning, E4 Family Church. Hey, let me be amongst the first to say happy three-year church anniversary. Y'all are doing the doggone thing. Y'all are making a huge impact on God's kingdom right here in our area. Listen, Pastor Jason, your amazing wife, your beautiful children, y'all, I am so elated just to say that we are connected and we are walking in the same path. Listen, man, I am. I wish we could be there to celebrate with you guys this morning, but please accept this as a hearty congratulations for myself. Again, my name is Tony, for those you don't know, and I serve as the lead pastor and church planter of Triumphal Christian Fellowship in Waxhatchee, Texas. Listen, I'm looking forward to what God is gonna do in this next season of your life and how beautiful are the mountains on the feet of those who bring the good news. Hello, E4 Family Church. Hey, family. Woo. Hey, Pastor Jason, Pastor Jackie, we wanna take a moment to celebrate with you your third anniversary. Wow, isn't that exciting? Look, look, we, we're here at Wild Wild, listen to the music. We're grooving, thinking about <laughs> y'all, celebrating. Yes. This is so amazing. You know, I did a little bit of a study on the number three. And as you know, there's so many correlations spiritually and biblically in regards to the number three. Number one, obviously, it symbolizes the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But it also means literally divine wholeness. And I want you guys to understand that as I was praying for you, praying for the church, that you're in a season where God is saying that you are whole, you have everything that you need. And when you think about a tree, a tree has a root system that goes down into the ground where nobody can see it, where it's being developed, it's stretching, it's, it's seeking out nutrients, and it's developing the foundation for that tree to sprout and become all that it should be to produce fruit 
that will feed people, families, communities, and maybe even go across the nation. And I believe that that's what God has been doing for the last three years with E4 Family Church yes. and Family Ministry. You guys have been working in the dark. You've been laying the foundation. You've been faithful when no one has been looking or seeing what you've been doing. And I believe that God is setting you up to have a foundation that will sprout forth fruit that can feed the multitudes. Yes, and I just wanna tell you, church, oh my goodness, you are so blessed to have, you know, Pastor uh, Jackie and Pastor Jason as your pastors. I, guys, I still remember when us as a family, you know, we, we hit some low points and even as friends, you know, friends in ministry, we're, we were able to call you all as solid people and say, hey, can you pray with us? Can you be a listening ear? And you guys have always been there. And you know what? You're not just there for friends, for people that you've known for a long time. You guys are there for just God's people. So church, you are so blessed, so blessed to have these people in your life. People that are gonna love you despite, in spite what happens and what you go through and that will always be there for you. So we love you. The Davises say we love you. That's right. We wish we were there to celebrate. Yes. But know that we will continue to be rooting you guys on so that you can continue to take ground for the kingdom because that's what you guys are doing. So we just want you to know that Pastor Jason, Pastor Jackie, their beautiful family, their lovely yes. children have been there for us. Pastor Jason has personally ministered to me, prayed for me, given me wisdom and counsel, and my life would not be what it is today without the influence of Pastor yes. Jason and his lovely wife, Pastor Jackie. Hello, family. Game time, family time is such a big deal in our home, in our house, especially when the kids decide to play a game from my childhood. You know, the games where things are hidden, you know, and if you go this way or that way, the secret level or you can warp, there's a leaf here, a mushroom here, a, a flute here, and you travel to distant lands, man, it's amazing. And for about five minutes, I feel like, wow, I can show my kids something. And then the five minutes ends and my kids show me something. I'm like, man, where was that at? But the reality is this, the game that has all these hidden things in it, it already had it in there because the creator of the game put those things there for the sole goal and purpose of us discovering it, to make the game more fun, to make the game more exciting. Well, friends, that idea didn't start with game designers. That's God's idea. Proverbs 25, two says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search out a matter, to find it, that God has hidden little things along this journey for us to discover, and he's put it in the word of God. And what's important is for us to spend time digging, searching, and discovering these truths. And that's why I'm so excited as we continue this journey today. Ephesians chapter three is all about the apostle Paul revealing to us the father's perfect plan revealed something that was hidden for ages, but something that now was the time for us to know because it's something that God has always desired in his heart. This truth that Paul reveals was always there, but it was the right time, the right season for us to discover something so powerful that even the angels were looking forward to. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your desire for us to discover your plan, your plan for family. It is something that you thought of all the way back before Genesis. And it is something that is still near and dear to your heart. I'm so grateful, God, that we are chosen by you. We are loved by you. And you've chosen to reveal these truths to us. So I pray that you would open our ears and our eyes and our hearts and our minds to understand and comprehend your word today, I pray in Jesus name. Amen. Well, friends, the very first thing the father wants for all of us, he wants us to hear the good news. Open your ears. Jesus would say this all the time when he would speak to the disciples and to all those who gathered. He would say, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. But here's the thing that was big. This was huge because when Jesus was speaking, the crowd was predominantly a Hebrew crowd. But now what what the father wants us to know is beyond us having ears as Hebrews, for those of us who are not born a Hebrew, the gospel is for all believers. It, it doesn't matter what your background is. The good news is, is that we all get in on this. It just takes faith in the same God 
that Father Abraham believed in. It's so good. Ephesians 3, 1 says it this way, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of grace of God, which was given to me for you, that God gave me this special revelation for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. They didn't know it as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. And he goes on, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. This is huge. And he goes on, of which I became the minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Then I am not here because of my own choosing. I'm on an assignment. And my assignment is to tell you Open your ears, hear the good news. The gospel is for all believers. And this was such a big deal because Paul knew the gospel, the good news was for, for the Jews. And most of the Jews understood that. They were looking forward to the Messiah. Think about the day that Jesus was riding on a donkey and they're declaring, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah, the good news, they knew that. But this idea that sons outside of the sons of, of Abraham can be a part of this blessing too, and, and not for Paul. Like Paul's like, listen, I don't, I don't deal with such foolishness. I, 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 he's like Peter, I don't want anything unclean near me. And think about his education and his training, the path that he is on. It's incredible. Paul even says, I was a Hebrew of Hebrews, like the top, the best. My pedigree is impeccable. And with that pedigree, man, he couldn't stand this group of, of people that call themselves the way, following Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And this, this zealous young man is standing there one day while this humble man, by the name of Stephen. He's been accused of speaking against the traditions of Moses. When in actuality, Stephen, this deacon serving and taking care of the widow's needs was trying to tell them, listen, I'm not trying to do away with your tradition. I'm trying to help you understand the fulfillment of the promise of Father Abraham. I'm trying to get you to see that Jesus has already come. Our Messiah, he's here. He's come. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is there and he begins to, to share his faith boldly, so boldly that, that none of the, the leaders these Sadducees and Pharisees that would try to trip him up. They couldn't. These scribes, because he knew the word, but more importantly, he knew God. He knew Jesus. And as he was speaking, they bring him in and they trump him up on some charges, a bunch of lies, and, and he is standing there. And they're like, what do you have to say for yourself? Read about this in Acts chapter 7, 8, and 9. And he goes, let me tell you, about Father Abraham and the promise that was given to him. And he walks from Father Abraham all the way to Jesus. And he helps him understand that Abraham, Father Abraham was looking forward to the day of Jesus. Moses was looking forward to the day of Jesus. And friends, he has come. And then he tells them, and you crucified him. And hearing that, man, they heard enough. And so the order is given. Stone this man, Stephen. He doesn't deserve to live. And as he is there preaching the gospel, pleading and praying for his brothers to receive this truth, the Bible says his face was glowing like an angel's. And so different ones were chosen to pick up rocks, to throw them at Stephen. And as they're preparing to go towards Stephen, they take their coats off and they lay their coats at the feet 
of Saul. Saul is standing there and he's excited and he's looking forward to this one called the way to, to no longer live. He doesn't deserve to live. He's speaking blasphemy. But meanwhile, Stephen is there. And as he is speaking, he's crying out. He looks up and the Bible says the heavens open and he saw something so powerful that we know that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. But in that moment, while they were saying, stone him, and, and Paul is there watching these, these coats, the Bible says that our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, looks down and he stands up and he receives Stephen into his arms. So powerful that Stephen falls asleep in this life and is then comforted there in the next. So powerful. But before he dies, he prays to the very one who's receiving him. And he says, Lord, don't hold this sin against them. Can you imagine sharing the gospel, saying, I want you to be my brother, my sister forever. I don't want you to suffer the consequence of your sin. Jesus has come to pay it all. And while you're sharing the gospel, they're stoning you to death. That was Stephen. Wow. Saul watched those coats. And after that, Saul feels emboldened. And I know you hear me going back and forth between Saul and Paul, and I want to just unpack that real quick. It's important. You see, he's one and the same. Being a Hebrew, he had a Hebrew name, and that name was Saul. But also being a Roman citizen, he had a Roman name or a Greek name, and that name was Paul. After he has this moment where he is so zealous and he asked for permission. Listen, I want to I want to make others suffer the same fate as Stephen. They won't be quiet about the way we're going after them. And so Saul does. And in doing so, he's on his way to Damascus to find a whole group of believers. And he's got he's got authority. He's got might. He has zeal. And he's going to bring these people back so that they can suffer the consequences for their false beliefs. And while he is on the way, a multitude of, of men with him, he encounters the very one that he is he is trying to persecute Christians for worshiping. He encounters the living God. He encounters Jesus. Jesus comes and he speaks to him and the light is so bright. Saul's blinded. He falls from his horse. The, loud, the noise is so loud, it sounds like thunder and the others can't even understand what's being said. But Jesus speaks to Saul. And he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Which is such a powerful thing for him to say, because up until this point in time, Saul had never seen Jesus before. He heard about him, but he didn't waste his time with Jesus. He didn't believe in him. He had no personal relationship with him. And in that moment, Jesus tells him, why are you persecuting me? And by saying that, he helped him understand that all these believers that put their faith and trust in me, they're my family. They're my body. They are me. So if you persecute them, you're persecuting me. And at that point, he says, well, who are you, Lord? And he tells him, I am Jesus. And from that point, Saul, he fasts three days, no water. And he's praying and he's crying out to God and the Lord is speaking to him. And then the Lord, in that moment, he caused him to become blind, I believe, so that in the natural his eyes were closed. But in the supernatural, in that moment, for the first time in his life, his eyes became open. And over those three days, he prays and he prays and he prays. And the Lord sends another disciple by the name of Ananias. He says, I have chosen Saul to be my vessel. I've chosen him. And this is what Saul is referring to when he says, I'm the prisoner of the Lord. I've been chosen by him. I can do nothing else. This is what I must do. I've been called by him. I've been anointed by him. I've been sent by him to you. And what has he been sent to do? <laughs> Listen, all of that training as, 
as a Hebrew of Hebrews means absolutely nothing to the group that Jesus would send him to. He is spending the rest of his days talking to Gentiles who could care less about Jewish religious laws and traditions. It is hilarious when we think that we're trying to prepare ourselves for our future. Instead, Lord says, just come to me and I'll give you all the equipping that you need. In fact, Paul gets to a point where he says, listen, I consider all of my self-proclaimed righteousness to be worth nothing but for the sake of Christ. And it's in the spirit of this that he remembers Stephen. He remembers that he persecuted Stephen and so many others like him. And he says, listen, I'm not worthy to be chosen because I persecuted the church, but I'm so grateful that I get to deliver this news to you. So please hear the good news that the gospel is for all believers. And then the second thing that Paul tells them and he tells us that we need to believe the good news. It's one thing to hear the good news. Jesus proclaimed it, Stephen proclaimed it, but they did not believe it. Instead, they stoned Stephen to death. So hearing it is not enough. You got to believe it. And what are we believing? That through Christ, we now have kingdom access. This is big because without Christ, we have no access. We are doomed. Ephesians 3, 8 says it this way. To me, who am the least, the less and the least of all saints. And he's referring to the, the pain that he still feels because he's persecuted the church. He's saying this grace was given that I should preach the the, among the Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ, like he chose me, he hasn't gotten over it. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Christ Jesus, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and the powers in heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Jesus. That is so good. That last statement, we have boldness, we have confidence by faith through Jesus. And he is speaking to Gentiles. He is speaking to non-Hebrews. He is saying, listen, they understand they can pray because of their lineage and their heritage, but you can pray too because of your lineage and heritage through Christ Jesus, that we have all been made co-heirs and sons of the living God. This is big news. And Saul hadn't gotten over it. And for the rest of his life, he says, rather than go by my Roman, I mean, by my Jewish name, my Hebrew name, which associates me with, with King Saul and, and all of my piety and my righteousness. No, call me by my Roman surname, my, my Greek name. Call me Paul, which means little. That I believe in the sight of God, I am so small. But the Lord rewards him for his faith. He says, in your weakness, Paul. I am made strong. That is so good. And the third thing is for us to receive the good news that through the Holy Spirit, Jesus now lives in our hearts. That is a big deal. This is, this is powerful. The, the progression that he is walking us through is listen, hear the good news. The gospel is for all who believe. Believe the good news. Believe it. Don't just hear it that through Christ we have kingdom access, that we now can come boldly before the throne of grace. But this third one, receive the good news. And there's a difference. So now you can move beyond knowledge and actually walk in true power and authority. Now bring this up because in our own strength, our knowledge will fail us. And I've seen this happen again and again so many times. As I've, I've said this before, but I have seen brilliant people, intelligent people do things that don't make sense based on their level of intelligence. There's a box that says, Surgeon General Warning, these things will kill you. Yet I've seen ER doctors, 
ER nurses outside in the cold in the middle of winter with all that knowledge. They believe it. They know it. But they didn't receive it. They didn't receive the instruction they needed. And they needed something beyond themselves because if they could quit, they would. And that's what happens to us when we read the word of God. It's like, ah, I want to live right. I want to live better. But how do we do it? When we receive the good news, it's through the Holy Spirit that Jesus now lives in our hearts. This is what Jesus was referring to. It's good that I go because I'm going and I'm going to be seated at the right hand of the Father. But the Holy Spirit's going to come. and He's going to remind you of all the things that I've said to you. And in that, now you're ready. Both the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit will make their home now on the inside of you. This is powerful. Because a relationship like this had never existed before, even in the garden. Adam walked with God in the cool of day, but that was still a relationship that was on the outward. And the Lord is saying, listen, I, I've got a whole new surprise for you that now you're part of my family, but I'm not on the outward. I'm living on the inward. I dwell in temple, not built by hands, but in you. Ephesians 3.13, therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory, that I'm here for your glory, for your benefit. I will not be silent about this gospel. And I, I believe it's, it's worthy of God's praise and worthy of my sacrifice and love for you, that I'll wear these chains. I will not be silent about this truth. And for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named, that we're all one big happy family now, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the depth, length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. He is saying in this relationship, go beyond a cerebral knowledge of what's right, beyond a cerebral knowledge of what's good. And now you have what is right and what is good, what is true living on the inside of you. So now when he's writing his word on your heart, he's doing it from the inside out. He is doing a work from the inside out. This is so powerful. This was the mystery. This is what he was talking about. Look at the Old Testament, all the laws, all the things. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this. Do that. And they couldn't do it because in our own strength and our own flesh, we don't have the power. But through Christ, we can do it. And he helps us because now he lives on the inside of us. And that leads us to the fourth thing. This news is so good. We must share it but also pray for others to receive it. Don't hold on to this. Let everyone know who hears. Listen to the good news. The gospel is for all believers and believe the good news that through Christ, we can have kingdom access. This is so powerful. And number three, receive the good news that through the Holy Spirit, Jesus now lives in our hearts. This is so powerful. And Paul prays. Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I understand that this passage is often referred to when we're praying and believing to, for God to do something big. But what could be bigger? than allowing the living God who created the universe to, to step inside of us and live in our hearts. That this prayer, yes, we can pray for big things, but the biggest thing that God wants us to do is to share and pray for others to receive the good news, that he desires that none be lost, that your neighborhood, your community, your home, your families, those people that you come around, pray for them, that their hearts will be ready to receive this gospel truth, that the Lord says, go into the world and make disciples. He wants all of us to be a part of his family. 
So what's the Holy Spirit saying to you through this message? Father, I thank you for your desire for us to receive this truth and to grab a hold of it, but to not just keep it to ourselves, that we would tell others, we would tell those in our neighborhood, in our community, that this world is in desperate need of saving. And the truth has been made known to us. So, Father, I pray that by the love we have for them and the love that they see that we have for one another, that they would come to know you, I pray in Jesus name. Amen. Well, friends, I'm loving this book. I can't wait to jump into chapter four next week when we begin to understand the, the role that we have as the body of Christ. Blessings. Can't wait to see you there.